Chuck did a comedy western called The Comeback Trail. And the western was shot in Central Park. <laughs> That's another thing. <laughs> that, that was the whole allusion to the movie, that we were making this western in Central Park. But, but I what, turned to him and I said, hey, wait a minute. Why there were no horses? You can't have a western without horses. And he thought for a minute and he said, Oh, the cop didn't show up. <laughs> One of the most talented character actors. He's voiced many cartoons. He was in DuckTales as multiple characters, Garfield, just about any animated show you can think of. But he was also one of the younger brothers, younger brothers in a Bonanza comedy episode. Let's hear it for Chuck McCann. Give me a hug. Okay, Chuck. There you go, Robbie. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you. <laughs> no, no. Chuck. Once he's up here, it's going to be hard to get rid of him. But no, he's no, here. no. He, I'll, he's believe he's me, I'll, I'll split fast. So, believe me. So let's talk about Bonanza, because Bonanza, one of the most popular westerns ever made, Chuck was in an episode written and directed by Michael Landon. Yeah, the great Michael Landon. What a wonderful guy. I'm telling you, he was just, he was just so amazing that we did, we did a few things together, actually. And uh, he wrote this thing and then wrote a couple of other things for me. He, he was a marvelous director, actor, and writer. I mean, a lot of people didn't know that about him. Mike, Michael did everything. He was a very talented man and died way before his time. I'm telling you, that was one of the saddest days of my life when I heard that Mikey passed away. Well, the episode you did, uh, you did it with Struther Martin, too. Yeah, yes. Yeah, One of the great <laughs> character actors. What we have here is failure to communicate. I love <laughs> Struther. If you don't know who Struther is, you certainly know that role. And you certainly uh, remember that voice. He was incredible. What a wonderful guy. And he lived up on uh, off Lake Hollywood, up in there in the hills. And we would go there often and just sit down and, and giggle and talk. And his wife and everybody, we had wonderful, wonderful afternoons together. He was a great guy. And, and Michael cast both you and Struther together yes. to be brothers. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, that was a wonderful, wonderful time, too, because... I, I, I can't begin to tell you the clowning that went on. <laughs> I, I, poor Michael was ready to pull his hair out because when he was going riding to go south, we went, of course, north. <laughs> and then he had to get the, the plop back in, on, on the track again. But we had, we had more fun doing that thing. That was a great time. Another Western that Chuck did, that uh, directed by a friend of ours who has passed, the brilliant writer-director Harry Hurwitz, oh, God. who did The Projectionist that starred Chuck. Thank a, you. A great movie. But Chuck did a comedy western called The Comeback Trail. Yeah. And that, was, <laughs> that was a very little-known film. And it will probably be never known, okay? <laughs> Unless you go hunting for it. Well, we're going to uh, talk about it now so people will know that okay. it was Chuck and Buster Crabbe as the star, and Robert Statz with guest stars, Joe Franklin. <laughs> they don't know who <laughs> Joe Franklin is? That's what Laura says. She doesn't know who I said, wait a minute, I was on the Joe Franklin show. Okay, do you says, know who he is? <laughs> who is he? Don't, don't, Joe used to have an interview show in New York. He did. He yeah, also ran for 40, 40 years. years. That's right. For 40 years, he was the top interviewer in New York City, so it would be like somebody here. Who, no, but it was carried on cable. We watched it out here. Oh, you did? Oh, yes. Son of a gun. Mm -hmm. How embarrassing. <laughs> but it was on yeah, at prime I'm sorry time to here. hear that. It was on at 10 o'clock here, but it, back east it was oh, 1 okay. in the morning. No wonder I didn't get any roles in movies. <laughs> so you watched it out here. It stunk. The plot of the comeback trail is similar to the producers, and I don't know which came first, but... Chuck oh. and Robert Statz 
decide to hire this washed up old B Western actor, Buster Crab, take a big insurance policy on him and kill him. We wanted to take someone who had been on the top and had fallen to the bottom to raise them by the collar and bring them up. It was a toss up between him and Howdy Doody. Great plot. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I tell you, we, uh, there was no script. The script was actually an idea. And what we did was improvise it in each scene. Like Harry would say, um, here's how we open. Uh, you're, you're with Buster, and you're trying to tell him that you want him to ride his horse uh, next to the stagecoach going to the other. So I, I would literally come out, sit down, and talk to him and say, listen, I want you to do me a favor. And we would improvise this, this thing. And I was doing a character, too. I did a European... Uh, producer. Enrico Kodak or something. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't think of the name of this character, so I thought, Enrico is a good name for an Italian. I said, what's his last name? Kodak. That's with a C. <laughs> no, no, actually it was with a K. K and ended in a C. Yeah, 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 because we get sued by Kodak. Uh -huh. What's the matter, Enrico? You got gas again? No gas this time. This time's the bubbles are up here. And the Western was shot in Central Park. <laughs> That's another thing. <laughs> that, that was the whole allusion to the movie, that we were making this Western in Central Park. But, but I what, turned to him and I said, hey, wait a minute. Why there were no horses? You can't have a Western without horses. And he thought for a minute and he said, oh, the cop didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how bad this movie was anyway. <laughs> what happens is it's like a Roadrunner cartoon where Chuck and Stats are trying to kill Buster Crab and it always backfires. I take the actual tobacco out of an ordinary cigarette and from the TNT, I open the top and I gouge out some of the gunpowder. Make it look great. <laughs> it, it sounds fun, Chuck, but uh, and, and the voiceover work, how, how is that done? Do you get for the cartoons? You, you've done so many things for Disney. Oh, God. Uh, I started when I was seven doing voices, and uh, I, uh, uh, Disney and and uh, Warner Brothers, and uh, of course, all of the uh, Hanna Barbera stuff, you know. Cheer, I adore Bobo. You know, after Dawes passed away, I did Yogi, and I'm um, the voice of, Come here, Sonny, get your Cocoa Puffs. Oh, okay, Krabs, Yahoo! I'm coming for Cocoa Puffs! Coming for Cocoa Puffs! Coming for Cocoa Puffs! <laughs> <laughs> Here I'm 80, and I'm still doing that voice. I can't believe it. You're That's lucky. Amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. good. And something a lot of people may not know, that, that Chuck was one of the founders of the Laurel and Hardy fan club called Sons of the Desert. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very few people know that, or I, you know, even let me know that I, that, I, that I did create it. It was actually on my show. And, uh, and your show was in New York. My, I had a, uh, an hour show every day. I had a two-hour show on Saturday, and I did a four-hour show on Sunday. What station was that? WPIX. And I was on seven days a week. And, that, and I did that for like nine years or so. Ooh. And then I went over to WNEW and did it again. And you were showing Laurel and Hardy films on some of those? I, uh, on all of the WPIX stuff. Mm -hmm. And also on Christmas, and you know, Stan was like my dad. And you met him oh, man. many met times. Him. Tell was, us about it. He's he's just the the godfather of my son Sean, who has passed now, and uh, is with Stan. And uh, he uh, he was a just a wonderful, wonderful person, Stan Laurel. I can't begin to tell you how creative he was. He was the backbone of that team. 
And uh, there's no question, Oliver Hardy was absolutely marvelous. I, I didn't get to meet Hardy, although I saw him a couple of times. And uh, Stan was absolutely fabulous. I talked to him since I was 12 years old on the phone every day. And uh, he, this is what he Were said. Were these collect calls? <laughs> no, no, but he, that's what he, he was afraid of. He said, not that they were collect, he just was afraid that I was spending money and my mother didn't know. So, so this is what, now I'm 12 years old and here's what the phone's with. I say, hi, Mr. Laurel. And he says, well, hello, son. Uh, is this Chuck? Are you calling from New York? I said, uh, yes, Mr. Laurel. May I, may I speak to your mother, please? <laughs> Hey, Ma! It's for you! Who is it? Stan Laurel! Stop kidding! No, it's really him! Hello, Miss, Miss McCann, can I... Is it all... It, it, is it possibly... Could I... Could I... Did you really let him... Uh, is he calling me? <laughs> No, he would do things like that. Uh, anyway, he was just, he was like my father, godfather, everything. He was just the closest thing in my, in my life. And um, well, I, you've uh, certainly started something that's uh, gone well, all over the world. The Sons of the Desert fan clubs are all over the world. Well, we're all over the world now, yeah. We're uh, 500,000 strong, at least, we've been, and that's grown and grown and grown. Well, their I mean, comedy all, never ages. Their comedy is still never. great. You know, I have, if, in fact, I went to WPIX. They wanted me to do a cartoon show, and I was very, you know, a lot of you are from here, so you wouldn't know, but you have a guy out here who is that one guy that everybody loves for kids, Tom Hatton, and Tom was wonderful out here. Well, I was like... Tom Hatton in New York City, but New York City is now 10 million people, so we had, we had a big base, a big fan base, and uh, they would turn out in droves for me. One uh, night, I, I, I had a guy on the, my show, he was on the show, and I, I said, hey, Bob, I said, uh, what are you doing tonight? He says, oh, well, we're going down to light the tree in my town. Oh, in Syosset? Yeah, uh, that's great. I tell, I tell you what, anybody in Syosset, uh, well, what time are we lighting the tree? He says, 7 o'clock. I says, okay, I'll be there to light the tree for you. So, would you really? Yeah, okay. So, if you're in Syosset, drop down, we'll light the tree. Well, when we got to Syosset, I want to say a little under a million kids <laughs> showed up and they, with their parents in their cars. We caused such a tragedy in that town. I, I don't think they've still revived from this thing, what we did to that town. It was unbelievable. I could not get to the tree. I couldn't get anywhere near the tree. And then people found out I was in the car. They started chasing after me. And we had a big car chase into Manhattan. I mean, it was unbelievable, you know? But that's, that's what kid shows were like. And... and uh, those shows were like in those days. You know? Well, it's all now on the internet. As yeah. is this show, you'll see Chuck's interview on the internet. Find I'd out. like to know where that is. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of those shows you do it and you don't know where the hell it is. Well, uh, I'm on somewhere, aren't I? <laughs> you know? That's well, you know future. this. So, Chuck, thank You're you so for great. being here. I'm not going to leave. Oh, see, I yeah, want to tell you. What did I tell you about? <laughs>